Hi friends, Simon here from InformTrades.com. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the various oil ETFs and compare the pros and cons of each one. Let's get started. Okay, key points. Know your time frame, and that's really important because of something known as contango. Know your risk reward and leverage. So basically just know your trade very well. Know how long you expect to hold it, how much you're risking, what your target price is, the size of your position, leverage. <clears throat> know all the details, know it well. Monitor the trade also. WTI or Brent, those are two different types of oils. Know which one that you want to be invested in. And then we'll go through a comparison of ETFs uh, as well as their performance through the, uh, 2014. Okay, the main thing to remember is that when you're investing in ETF, you are investing in a fund, and this fund then goes out and buys whatever assets that it says it's going to advertise. Um, in this case, we're talking about oil ETFs, so you're investing in a fund, and that fund is going to go out and buy oil. How is it going to go out and buy oil? Usually, or almost all of them, what they're really doing is they're buying futures contracts. So they're buying oil, the price, they're speculating on the price of oil at a given date in the future. That could be some of them invest in the price of oil, you know, right now we're in December, so they may buy the January price of oil, the price of oil as it will be delivered in January. Others may go six months out. They may pick a June delivery month. Um, now, what these ETFs really do is that when, let's say, for instance, you know, you invest in an ETF that is buying the next month's oil, uh, and then the next month comes. So right now we're in December. We buy an ETF that is investing in January oil. Then January comes. It's going to roll over. And then, if you, assuming you don't liquidate your position, it's going to roll over and buy the February month of oil. So what happens in January is then that they're selling the January contract of oil and they're buying the February contract price of oil. Now, if the futures price is rising, meaning if each futures month is going higher, they're selling January at a lower price and then they're buying February at a higher price. This is known as contango when the price is a uh, future month is rising. It's known as backwardation when the opposite is occurring and that the price of the future is falling. The price of the near-term months is higher than the uh, further months out. That's backwardation. The inverse where the higher months or the later months are higher, that's uh, contango. If you're investing in an ETF contract, that's or if you're investing in ETFs that's investing in short-term futures contracts, that's constantly rolling over and each futures month is higher, then you're going to experience a lot of contango. If you're investing in ETF that's holding for a longer duration and you yourself are holding for a longer duration, then, <coughs> excuse me, then you may be more compatible and you may have minimal contango. So really, you want to understand your trade duration, your expected trade duration, and find an ETF that is investing in futures contracts of a similar duration. Uh, right now on the screen, you can see an example of an oil ETF and what happens when, you know, if you invest in a one-month, USO, for instance, that's a ticker of the most com popular ETF on the U.S. stock exchanges. Uh, but it's investing in a one-month contract. So if you buy USO with the intention of holding it for a year, you could be exposing yourself to 12 separate instances of contango costs, and over time that's going to add up. And then you, at the end of the year, you'll see that your performance didn't really match up with the price of oil uh, as you expected. So... Finding an ETF that is, corresponds well with your expected duration is something that's pretty important. Beware of leveraged ETFs. So there's a lot of ETFs out there that advertise that they are basically going to be two times oil, three times oil, or whatever commodity. We're talking about oil in this case. Those ETFs work well within a short time frame, intraday, within a week. As you get longer and longer, you see a bigger and bigger disconnect between the adver advertised leverage and what's actually occurring. And that has to do with how they're calculating leverage based on what price, whether it's the closed price or some type of average, as well as the fund management cost, the cost of borrowing money for leverage. So all these things really get add up. And if you really want to use leverage, you're probably better off in the futures or CFD market. The leverage ETFs are really not well suited for holding a position for a longer amount of time. On the screen right now, you see UCO, which is advertised as two times the price of oil, so it should double the price of oil. However, right now we're looking at a year-to-date chart. We're seeing oil down 45.5% year-to-date. UCO is only down 68%. Really, it should be down about 91%. So you see there's a pretty big disconnect there, about 23% less than what is being reported. And that has to do with the way these ETFs are, are operated. 
remember that with an ETF, you're not actually buying the underlying contract. You're investing in a fund, and that fund is buying uh, in a contract. So there's a middle person to go through, a middle entity, and how they're operating, it's not always nefarious, but how they're operating can impact your returns. Um, so that's something to, be, uh, to bear in mind. And personally, I would just recommend to not participate in leverage ETFs. And if you want leverage, uh, go to the futures or CFD markets. Um, that's sort of the simple way I like to think of things. WTI or Brent, there's two types of oils, and we'll do a video on this that goes into a lot of the details. Basically, WTI is sometimes called U.S. oil. That's the oil that comes generally from the U.S., the, the wells and drills uh, in the uh, U.S. It's a sweeter type of oil, and that means what the term sweeter refers to the, content, the sulfuric content, so it has less sulfur than Brent. Um, Brent is generally associated with Russia, with a lot of Eastern Europe. There's the idea, or one viewpoint, is that Brent is going to become the dominant form of oil and, and the primary uh, benchmark that determines the price of oil. If, however, you want to speculate more on the U.S. market, you think shale is really what you want to speculate on, that it's going to come back and that it's going to drive higher prices because of the need for U.S. shale oil, then you'd probably be more interested in WTI. You see on the chart right now, there has been a pretty big divergence over the past few years. Noticeable BNO is Brent, that's the uh, gray line here. USO is uh, the ETF for WTI oil, one of the ETFs for him. Uh, you see there's pretty big divergence. Over the past uh, year or so, that divergence has gotten much smaller. So generally the two will move together, but it's important to understand what you want to invest in. And we'll, like I mentioned, we'll, this is a pretty big topic, so we'll go into greater detail on this in a future video. WTI generally is the American oil, and Brent is Eastern European. That's a simple way of looking at it. Okay, ETF comparison matrix. These are the ETFs in the United States on U.S. stock exchanges. There is basically five ETFs. I've removed ETNs, which are exchange-traded notes. We'll talk about them in another video, but these are just ETFs, which are funds. I've also removed the leverage ETFs. And here is the direction, you know, there's only one that's short ETF. So this ETF, DNO, is going to, if you want to speculate in the opposite direction, if you want to speculate that the price of oil will go down, DNO is really where you want to be at. The other ETFs are more so if you want to speculate that the price of oil is going to go up. Ideal duration, and I really simplified this so it's not, there's a little more to it. You know, I tried to make it so it fits into one column in a uh, matrix of sorts. But this refers to, the kind of contracts, futures contracts, that these ETFs are holding, which we talked about earlier in this video. DBO and USL are the two ETFs that really hold futures contracts that are of further, uh, the duration is further out, the expiration is further out. So really, if you plan on holding oil for six months, a year, or something, a longer amount of time, DBO and USL are going to minimize your exposure to contango. Remember that this can sometimes work in your favor or backwardation where the future months are less or lower in price than the current month. That's, that can actually help you. And, and if you have a shorter contract and the market goes into backwardation, you're buying, you can actually make a lot of money. But really, contango is what you want to be concerned with. And as mentioned earlier, you really want to match up your duration with what the fund is holding. That way you Really, you don't want to be speculating too much, or some sophisticated traders may wish to speculate on contango or backwardation. But for ETFs, really a lot of what you're doing is speculating on oil. You want to get the closest, uh, you want to replicate the performance of a barrel of oil. And to do that well through an ETF, you want to find the fund that matches your duration. Personally, you know, I'm interested in a six months, a year, possibly a little more. So I'm really interested in DBO and USL. Uh, management fee. You know, these are, I would, I would recommend people not focus too much on this. You know, the DBO does have a higher management fee, but I think duration as well as how the fund is managed is far more important. So, you know, research these tickers if you're interested. Learn a little about the company that's running it, see their balance sheet, um, and then get an idea. Make sure you're comfortable. Remember that when you're investing in the ETF, as we've, I've mentioned numerous times in this video, you're investing in a fund. So you not only need to have faith in their strategy, which in this case is, is buying oil, but also make sure that the fund is, uh, is one that you trust, you think it operates, it's well operated. So the management fee is pretty small, um, not a big deal, but USL is slightly lower than DBO if you're looking at six-month uh, contracts. Um, 
And here, if you're interested in Brent, there's really only one option, BNL. That's why it's highlighted in orange here. So the rest of them are focused on WTI. These are referring to U.S. ETFs. Price comparison year to date. So this is where, you know, all the things that we've discussed, it, uh, it may actually, there may be some surprises here. Even though USL is a longer term ETF, it actually performed worse. And that may be because in a down market, you know, the contango uh, impact is a little less or a little less relevant. So even though USL is a longer term duration, it didn't really perform the best. The price of oil, as we see, is about, it's this one here, the candlestick, so about 46.88%. That's the decline year to date. <clears throat> Let's call it 91, 92, somewhere around there. Uh, or excuse me, <laughs> well, 46, 48, I doubled it, thinking of the other example. About 46, uh, you know, close to 47%. So USL underperformed that about 9%. That's pretty significant, but you know, you still capture the bulk of the move. These two here are USO and <clears throat> DBO. So DBO is a longer term duration, but it basically performed the same as USO, which is really focused on the shorter months. And again, I think in an upward market, you may see a different scenario. In a downward market, this sort of uh, they mirrored each other pretty well. BNO is Brent, uh, is Brent, the ETF for Brent, and it really tracked, you know, it's totally covering, you see these sort of red crosses, that's the price of Brent here, you can see them more clearly here, these uh, red crosses, that's the price of Brent. BNO has really matched the Brent price almost perfectly. Um, you know, that's an example now, not to say that it's going to continue going forward, and I think in an up market, it could be very different, but I thought this is something worth uh, worth thinking about and sort of get an idea of how these markets have changed, how these ETFs have performed year to date. And that's about it. You know, this is a pretty rich subject. Any questions you have, anything you want to add, join us at informedtrades.com. Best of luck in your trading, and we'll see you next time. Take care.